Hi, I'm Dr. Roger Saldivar. I'm the head of the Instituto Saldivar uh, Institute in Argentina, and my background is in visual optics and refractive surgery. The most burning topics concerning cataract surgery at present are clearly this group of IOLs uh, that are based in extended depth of focus technology. I think that this is a great opportunity today to expand the premium channel that has been stuck in, in the last couple of years. And with this extended depth of focus that they clearly have more tolerance, they are more forgiving, we can include in, in this uh, premium technology all those patients that have unstable tear film, that, that there, there's a big group uh, in every day's clinic. We can include patients with uh, uh, different uh, macular conditions. We can include patients with high pressure in those borderline limits or with some um, decrease in their visual field. So uh, finally, the, the most important thing is that we can upgrade many, many patients that are willing to have a better technology and they were in a way only uh, classified as monofocal IOL candidates. So, I do believe that there is a huge niche to be exploited and, and I celebrate this new technology that is in our hands today. I believe that refractive optics have a, have a very clear advantage over diffractive optics in terms of uh, forgiveness. Uh, they are optics that have more tolerance to defocus because since we are extending depth of focus, we are enlarging the, the, the focal point at the retina plane. It's, it's definitely more forgiving uh, since they are not based in something called uh, constructive interference, like it's uh, happening with the diffractive optics. We can, we can, it can tolerate more micro aberrations created by dry eye. So reason why these are good optics to use in patients that have unstable tear films. And on the other hand, as a disadvantage, it's, clearly, it's clear that the, the, the near ad, so the power that this patient has for near, is not as good as what you can get with diffractive optics. So you always have, have pros and cons. The, the point is that there is, there is always a, a candidate for each technology and you have to tailor make your decision. But the, the good news is that refractive optics are truly complementary and, and are going to, to, to enlarge the, the premium channel, as I mentioned before. With more than 0.5 diopters against the rule and more than 1.25 diopters with the rule, we always select a toric IOL. Uh, correcting astigmatism is very, very important and more in premium IOLs where patients have higher expectations and the reality is that most of these optics, uh, more in the diffractive side, they're, it's very critical and very sensitive to small numbers of cylinders. My good friend Francesco Carones uh, demonstrated in his paper how critical and how sensitive it's 0.75 diopters of astigmatism in these diffractive optics and how acute was the drop in, in sign contrast sensitivity in all these patients. Another thing that he demonstrated was how patients with more than 0.5 diopters decreased considerably the satisfaction questionnaire after the procedure. So it's, there's no doubt that correcting astigmatism and more in this premium channel is, is, is a must. The barriers of surgeons to treat more patients with astigmatism are two, in my opinion. One, and, and very important, is patients most of the times, they try to avoid higher expectations of patients. And of course, when someone, if you are doing a premium eye well, like it's a toric eye well, you have the pressure to really perform. That's number one. Many doctors are not used to have that pressure. Number two is in the higher amount of cylinder, 
it's really the confidence of executing exactly what they are proposing. So there are different uh, weaknesses in terms of alignment, having a proper alignment, having a good calculation, calculating that cylinder power that are, of course, more difficult when you have a smaller cylinder because you truly have more more to lose than to, to win it. You have to be more more uh, exquisite in every calculation, every single uh, step. So many doctors avoid this, and this is uh, this is critical because we are always speaking about is the same to, to put a toric with T5, where you're correcting more than three diopters, than with the T2. Is if you have a residual error, the patient will suffer the same. It's, it's, you do have to take care of that small cylinder if you want the patient to perform. So, reason why we are very aggressive with cylinders, as I mentioned before, and we always put a cylinder in patients that have more than 0.5 diopters against the rule, which is very difficult to compensate with relaxing incisions or even with their principal incision. And with the rule, whenever we find something noisy in the cornea or have a prior um, LASIK, prior refractive surgery, we do put with one more, one, more than one diopter, a cylinder with the rule. The eye well that I would choose uh, for myself would be clearly an extended depth of focus eye well, and, if, and it would be preferably, I would choose a refractive extended depth of focus eye well. Uh, I have dry eye, I have uh, dysfunctional uh, glands, uh, meibomian gland dysfunction. I really suffer uh, my, my dryness. I have unstable tear film and I would definitely uh, select something that is forgiving, that I wouldn't condition myself in my future. And from a surgeon perspective, I like to have the less uh, compromise in my contrast sensitivity to be able to keep doing surgery. So I definitely use uh, something like, like the comfort I will in myself. Hopefully you have enjoyed the meeting. Please stay safe and uh, it will be great if we can see each other next year.